This jury needs to hear from me and hear the truth. We're not taught that we have to wait. Anytime we have a threat of deadly force, we can use deadly force. And as I started to get that second phrase out, show me your hands, I saw the silhouette. I was looking right down the barrel of a gun. And when I saw the barrel of that gun pointed at me, and I fired a single shot, then I observed the person that we now know as Miss Jefferson. I heard her scream and, and saw her fall like this. And I started to call out as well. Baker 325, shots fired, shots fired. Start a supervisor and in MedStar code, I wanted medical attention there immediately. Today we heard from the defendant in the Kills While Babysitting trial. Former police officer Aaron Dean took the stand in his own defense and faced a brutal cross-examination by the state. Police work and I had to make a choice. It wasn't a good idea, was it? It was the only idea, it was the only way to, to do that. Just like the only choice, is that, that, just like you're telling the story, the only choice you had was to shoot and kill a Tatiana Jefferson. Yes. So for today's Talkback segment, we wanted to know what you thought or what do you think of Dean's testimony. All right, still with me, forensic criminologist Dr. Laura Petler and family law attorney Randy Kessler. All right, guys, our first comment comes from Brooke. Brooke says, his fake attempt at crying and sniffling is noticeable. And Dr. Pello, I'll start with you because you mentioned a little something about that earlier. And you know, when I, when I was watching his testimony, I said to myself, okay, it didn't, look, it, did, it didn't look real to me, but that's the problem with taking the stand. He may just, A, number one, feel he was justified in his shooting and is not very emotional about it. Number two, um, he may not be the type of person that's terribly emotional. Three, happened three years ago. He may be over it at this point. It's one of the pitfalls or one of the difficulties of taking the stand in your own defense. I agree with you, Michael, completely, and I think it was a bold move for them to put him on first. I'm not an attorney, and I, I don't specialize in, in legal analysis, but from the legal standpoint, coming from the DA's office, I've seen this very, very infrequently in my career to put a defendant on first like this, and it was very interesting to me the way that he answered immediately yes when the prosecutor asked him you know did you feel like you had to shoot he said yes because he said i was looking down the barrel of the gun and then i realized you know after the fact that i shot that it was miss jefferson he he didn't intend to to cause anybody harm in from the way that i'm interpreting his behavior and i don't know him well to compare it but to me he looks genuine in certain responses and authentic to where he is trying to authenticate and, and tell the truth of what he thinks, even though he might come off as a bit more callous because time has has passed and people do change over time and they talk about it till they're just numb to it sometimes. Yeah, I agree because I, I, I agree. I'm confused a little because he seems genuine, but his, his attempts at emotion didn't. And I think that's the little dichotomy there. All right, our next comment comes from Phyllis. Phyllis says, this situation saddens me because I am generally on the side of law enforcement. But Aaron Dean comes across as pretty arrogant on the witness stand. That's an interesting thought by Phyllis uh, there, Randy. Did you find him to be arrogant on the stand at all? So I didn't, and that's sort of the interesting part, right? When you have a jury, you got you to gotta all feel the same way. And do you get sentenced? to you know that many years in prison 99 years in prison because you were arrogant how about the flip side is he stepped up and he did take the witness stand and he faced the music so to speak so um unless all 12 jurors feel the same way as that viewer felt um i think it was a good move for him yeah, it's interesting because I also wondered in this day and age, do the police officers still get the same benefit of the doubt that they used to? Because obviously Phyllis at one point had that and she's looking at it a little differently now. Uh, our next comment, guys, comes from Donna. Donna says, if this situation had been reversed and she had shot and killed him from inside her house when he was in her backyard looking through the window, she would not have been charged because she had no way of knowing that he was a police officer. And Dr. Pedler, that's the interesting point about this case, is that really, 
the victim in this case did nothing wrong. She was inside of her house. She had a gun. She was looking to protect herself and her little eight-year-old nephew. And had she shot him, I don't know if she would have faced charges, but it seems like she was in the right with everything she did. Right. And so, you know, it goes back to every state law and, and it being different in, in each state. But then, you know, again, back to perception, it's her perception of what she was seeing outside of her home versus what he was seeing and what he thought. And, and it's about human behavior and the psychology of this interaction between the two of them and how they individually perceived the other person. All right, Dr. Petler, I want to thank you so much for being with me. Randy Kessler, always a pleasure to have you guys on the show. Truly appreciate it. Folks, coming up next, we're going to review the three things that we've learned today and the cases that we've been covering from coast to coast right here on Court TV. All right, folks, here are three things that we've learned today. First, in the killed while babysitting trial, defendant Aaron Dean took the stand in his own defense. Dean described the moment that he shot at Tatiana Jefferson in her home and testified that he never identified himself as a police officer. I just saw the silhouette of the person in the gun. I don't recall seeing hands, but I, I did see that weapon pointed at me. You're not saying the gun's on the floor? No, the gun was pointed directly at me. Second, Ethan Crumbly's parents are asking for...